All right, so with that, it's 10 05, so I'm going to get started. Um, I just want to introduce myself. So, my name is Sarah. Um, I am a part of the city's digital service squad here in St. Catharines. Um, and we are helping local small businesses in St. Catharines with any of their digital needs. Um, thank you for joining my talk. We're going to be talking all things e commerce today. Um, so, without further ado, we'll get started. I'm just going to turn my video off. So not distracting from the nice slides that I made today. Um, so here we go. All right, so the agenda today, um, we're gonna cover a range of topics that will help you decide which direction you'd like to take your business in terms of online selling. So first we're gonna briefly discuss the current landscape of the e-commerce market, and then followed by some factors you should take into consideration when selecting your e-commerce platform. Then we'll dive into four different e-commerce platforms. So I'm gonna go over their different plans, pricing, benefits, drawbacks, and why you should choose that platform. So today we're gonna to be talking about Squarespace, Wix, Square Online Store, and Shopify. Then we'll move on to a few quick tips and tricks to optimize your online store, followed by some key market trends, um, which if followed will lead to a successful and profitable online business. Uh, finally, we'll wrap up with a quick Q&A if there's time at the end. Um, just a heads up, if there is, if we do run out of time at the end, I'll be sending the slides um, in a PDF format. And I will also be sending a one page document with some additional information and links to, directly to the platforms we talk about. So you can get a bit more information from their websites as well. Uh, my information's in the bottom corner there. And I also have it at the end of the slideshow if you want to um, get in contact with me directly through email. Move on. All right, so first we're going to begin with the current e-commerce landscape. So this is gonna show why having e-commerce is such a large opportunity for your business. Um, with more consumers shopping online than ever before and businesses selling online in record numbers, it's believed that the advances in the industry has seen in online shopping are here to stay. Retailers without a reliable e-commerce system in place could lose revenue and customers as online shopping continues to rise. So the three main considerations are um, shift, in, shift to online spending, global revenue, revenue growth, and shopping via social media. So uh, the first one being shift to online spending, 54% of consumers shifted more of their spending to online shopping since the pandemic was declared compared to earlier this year. So this opens up a huge opportunity for your business. The second point to make is that e-commerce has seen a global revenue growth. So global sales uh, revenue grew over 139% between February and May of 2020. So the height of the pandemic uh, last year. It's been steadily growing since and peaked over the holiday season. And then finally, um, another trend to look for is shopping via social media. So it's growing, especially with young consumers aged 18 to 34. Um, in a study, 54% of young consumers who purchase from independent retailers uh, discover brands via social media, compared to 43% of middle-aged consumers and 25% of older consumers. So it's quite a big market and it, um, it's great to be visible on social media, especially if you want to target that younger and middle aged demographic. So we're going to move to some considerations that you should look at before you pick a uh, e commerce platform. So most people automatically only think of the cost, um, but there's a lot more factors to take into consideration. Uh, we'll start with the cost. So depending on your business size, the e-commerce cost can be anywhere from free to thousands of dollars. Um, however, most sites will let you try them out for free without entering your credit card information. So I highly recommend taking advantage of free trials to see how comfortable you are with operating the platform and if its capabilities fit with your business needs. Um, I've tried free trials for over five different e-commerce platforms at the same time. And then I kind of just test them out here and there, and then you don't have to commit to anything. And that way you get a real good understanding of what you're going to be committing to once you do, um, purchase it. 
Uh, moving on is considering the SEO functionality of the platform you choose. So SEO is search engine optimization. Um, you're not going to have any customers if people can't find your store in the first place. So the e-commerce platform you choose should have built in SEO tools. Having the ability to customize your URL with your name and your products will help boost your search engine optimization and ranking, especially on Google, um, which will make your store easier to find. Uh, some platforms offer enhanced SEO tools in their plans and others you might have to upgrade for those um, advanced tools. The next factor con to consider is scalability. So just because your online store starts small doesn't mean you want it to stay small. Um, that's why you want an e-commerce platform that will help grow with your business. Even in the beginning, you may need more of a, more than just a basic e-commerce solution. So finding a platform that won't keep you stuck in one place or one plan that isn't right for your business is key. So the ability to upgrade plans and scale is um, a great option. Uh, another factor to consider is uh, selecting a mobile friendly platform. So the majority of sales come through mobile devices. So if your online store isn't mobile friendly, you're going to miss out on um, potential revenue. This is also a key trend that I'm gonna talk about later in the presentation. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that more in detail later. Uh, the next factor is going to be your site speed. So if you sell physical products, then you're probably going to include plenty of photos and videos on your storefront. So that means you'll need an e-commerce platform that's fast and reliable. If customers have, um, have to wait on images and videos to load, then you're going to lose out on sales. There are resources where you can test your site speed um, and optimize it that way. That will be included in the uh, one page document I send after the presentation. And then finally, we have the overall user experience on your website. You want to choose a platform with good user experience for you and also for your customers. So you should be able to set up your online storefront with little to no programming experience. And once the store is live, it should be easy for customers to navigate and search for products. So something to consider is your conversion funnel. So that is a path that a customer will take until they get to the end point, which hopefully would be to purchase an item. Um, you want to create a smooth experience to complete purchase. So you can start by luring them in at the top of the funnel with a email promotion or even a ad on Facebook. And then somehow you take them through the entire path so you lead them to the right purchase button. So keeping that path clear would be if you started with an email, linking directly to the product and then also having um, selecting a platform that allows for the checkout to take place on the same page as the product. So that minimizes your uh, conversion funnel. It takes less steps for the consumer to have to make a purchase. Um, <clears throat> all right, so moving on. Now, oh, my one image isn't showing, oh well. Um, we're going to compare uh, the different platforms. So um, all of the prices, just a note are in USD. Um, a lot of the websites don't let um, you convert the prices for the plan, you will be charged in, um, in USD as well. So we're going to be discussing uh, Squarespace, Wix, Square Online Store, and Shopify. Uh, all are easy to use. However, some may fit your business better depending on what capabilities you desire. Um, so we're going to start with Squarespace. Uh, so Squarespace offers three plans. They have a business plan at $18 a month, the commerce basic plan at $26 a month, and the commerce advanced plan at $40 a month. So one of the main differences between the business plan versus the rest of the rest of the plans is the transaction fee of 3%. So the other two plans don't have this fee. Um, and all plans include a free custom domain and $100 in ad credits. The not having the 3% transaction fee is uh, a really nice benefit. So you get to keep everything that you make um, from your sales. Uh, if you decide to upgrade to the commerce basic plan, you'll be able to enable Instagram selling and you'll have access to in-depth analytics. 
upgrading to the Commerce Advanced Plan also gives you all those features, plus the abandoned cart recovery, which lets you send automatic emails to consumers that have abandoned their cart. So they've added a product and decided not to buy. So sending this reminder could result in the completion of the sale. Maybe they just forgot or they had to think about it. Uh, so that feature is uh, a really great feature. They also, uh, this top plan lets you get advanced shipping options and you can sell subscriptions. So you can sell uh, repeat purchases of a product. If you're in the beauty industry, you could sell an automatic subscription to um, fulfill a mascara every three months or something like that. All right, and then this is just our quick breakdown of Squarespace. So it gives you total creative control over how your website will look. Squarespace stands out from the other platforms with its sleek and modern templates. The templates are flexible enough that you can DIY your online store exactly how you want it to look um, with no coding skills or additional plugins needed. They do have an app marketplace when we consider software integration. Um, some popular plugins include QuickBooks. So you can sync your invoicing and accounting features if you use that in already on other your in-store operations or anything else. Uh, ShipStation, so that assists with shipping, inventory management and returns. It's great if you have a bit of a bigger online business and you have a lot of inventory and it's easy to, um, just makes the process a lot easier. That is a paid plugin. Um, and then another featured plugin they have is Delighted. So that will send out automated post-purchase customer feedback forms, which is really valuable um, to get feedback on either the product or how they liked the site or um, what they thought of the purchase process, especially if you just set up the site, asking those kind of questions, it can be really valuable. Um, going to the key benefits. So you, the main benefit is the unlimited creative control, um, the access to uh, the entire collection of templates as well as tons of flexibility to create those, uh, sorry, to customize those templates. Um, you also get to sell your products on Instagram, which is a great feature. Uh, some of the main drawbacks are going to be you are limited to two payment options or gateways. So um, you can integrate PayPal or Stripe. So Stripe is a separate service that you would have to pay for as well, um, but it allows for credit card payments, Apple Pay, Android Pay, all those kinds of things to happen on your online store. Um, another uh, drawback would be the fact that your multi-channel selling will be limited to Instagram. So you're not able to sell on Facebook, Amazon, Pinterest, any of those kinds of other platforms. Uh, additionally, it has less powerful sales features for businesses. Um, all in all, you would choose to build your website with Squarespace if you want a visually appealing storefront um, and that you want, <clears throat> sorry, you want total creative control over your website's design and something that's just pretty simple, basic, and easy to use with the features that you need to, um, to run an online store. Uh, let me know if I'm going too fast at any time or too slow. Uh, yes, we will share the recording at the end as well. Uh, all right, so moving on to Wix. Uh, so Wix has three plans. Most of the platforms have three plans, which makes it makes my life easier when I was making these uh, slides with three sections. <laughs> uh, they have uh, business, business basic, business unlimited, and business VIP. So the business basic plan is $20 a month, and it has a 2.9% transaction fee and 30 cents per transaction. Uh, it includes 20 gigabytes of storage and a free custom domain for a year has no Wix ads and has multi-channel selling for Facebook and Instagram. Uh, upgrading to the Business Unlimited plan of $25 a month will get you all those features, plus 35 gigabytes of storage, automatic sales tax, so you don't need to get a plug-in, whereas in the first feature, you would need a plug-in for your sales tax. Um, you also get advanced shipping options and a thousand product reviews, as well as drop shipping options. Um, I'm going to discuss drop shipping a little later with uh, when we talk about Shopify. 
And then finally, if you decide to go with the business VIP plan, it includes 50 gigabytes of storage, the abandoned cart recovery, which is a pretty reoccurring feature with all these plans, and they're usually up in the higher tier levels. Um, a customer loyalty plan that you can set up so you can, that's with a plugin that comes automatically with this plan and it allows customers to gain points or like virtual stickers and they can redeem those um, for a dollar amount or a discount, discount code, whatever you see fit. So that's a really cool feature. Uh, it also includes $300 in ad vouchers. So a nice little bonus. I'm going to move on to the breakdown for Wix. So Wix is any small scale sellers with little to no tech knowledge dream come true. You get a easy to use drag and drop system to put together your store. So just drag text boxes and images and position them anywhere you want on the page. There is tons of creative freedom over your website's look. Um, you have the chance to build your store with, with zero cost. So what I mean by that is um, when you, you don't have to start paying for your plan until you actually start selling your products and services. I see a question, what is abandoned cart recovery? So abandoned cart recovery is a automatic service that some of the platforms offer. And it's when a potential customer added a product to the cart on your website and they didn't follow through with the purchase. So using the, um, uh, data that they receive on their end, they will send an automatic email to that person um, and then reminding them, oh, no, you forgot about this item. Um, would you still like to purchase it? That kind of thing. Just sending that reminder can help um, complete the sale. I have another question. Can you upgrade with any of the plans as you start the low end to start? Yes. So you can upgrade your plan whenever. Um, you're not locked into a plan. You can change around. You can downgrade back down if you'd like. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one of the other benefits is the, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, moving into the key benefits. Um, so you can build your first online store in no time with the drag and drop elements. Uh, you're free to design it exactly how you want it to look. And you can add product videos, which is also one of the trends that I'm gonna be talking about and the importance of product videos is really growing. It also has a lot more payment gateway options than Squarespace does with 45 payment gateways. Um, the main drawbacks include the fact that it uses absolute positioning in their coding. So websites that use absolute positioning um, have a little bit less mobile friendliness than a website that uses responsive design. So depending how you're laying out your contact, uh, sorry, your content for mobile, it might be a little bit more con time consuming than other platforms to set up. Um, another drawback uh, is that you're not able to switch your site template once you have built your site. So you really want to be confident in the templates that you have picked. The other option you can pick is if you start on a low plan, you can pick a template. And if you upgrade to a new plan or um, change your domain, you can change the um, template that you choose. But you, depending on um, the template, you may lose um, certain features or gain certain features. So it's something that you definitely have to consider. Um, so, Overall, the e-commerce tools that you get with Wix aren't as, uh, aren't as powerful as other platforms like Shopify, but you should choose to build your site with Wix if you're looking for an affordable e-commerce solution. You want it to be super easy to use and you want to be able to personalize every little aspect of your store. Um, I think I didn't go over the uh, software integration, so I'll move back over that quickly. Um, they have a large app market with over 250 plugins available. So it's kind of a, a medium sized app market. I find with Wix, depending on what you're selling, you don't need that many plugins. Plugins can start to get expensive as well. So it all depends on the features that you're looking for. Um, I'm going to be uh, providing some plugin suggestions in the one page document I send at the end of the presentation as well. All right, so now we're going to move on to Square Online Store. 
So one of the features that makes Square so unique is its free plan, which only includes the 2.9% fee and 30 cents per transaction. So it doesn't allow for a custom domain. However, you can sell on social media platforms, book appointments, enable online ordering for restaurants and offer curbside and local delivery. So for a free plan, it offers a lot the only drawback with it is not being able to have a custom domain. So that kind of affects uh, your branding a bit. Um, upgrading to the professional or performance plan will allow for that free custom domain. Uh, there's no square branding and even more features like, again, the abandoned cart recovery, uh, automatic customer review. So you don't need a plugin for that. People can just go in and review the product that they've purchased and attach pictures. And they also are offering discounted shipping labels. The transaction fees are the same for every plan. So I do believe that the free plan, if you're looking just to get started is great because you only have to worry about the transaction fees. All right, so moving on to the breakdown. Square is affordable, easy to use, and for any beginner trying to launch their own or their first online store. Um, it taps into artificial intelligence to help you make the best choices when building your site. Is that free domain endless? Um, most of them with the plans, the free domain is for a year. I can check into that. The 2.9% plus 30. So on, most, on almost every single e-commerce platform, they do both. Um, I don't have the reasoning to that, but they always have a percentage and the 30 cent fee. It just seems to be the standard across the board. Um, yeah, so. Um, okay, so moving back over to Square. Um, yeah, so the artificial intelligence is a really cool feature that it has. I'll explain that a bit, little bit later. Um, it's app store is similar to Squarespace in that it is limited in the apps and plugins. So it's not as robust as Wix or even Shopify. It has uh, some popular plugins, which include Jane Bookings, which I'm not sure if many are familiar with, but it is for um, health and beauty professionals to do bookings for uh, services. Uh, QuickBooks again, and then Cognito Form Builder. So Cognito Form Builder will let you send out custom forms or have forms on your site asking for information. So if people want to sign up to your mailing list, you can create a form for that on a page on your website. So some of the key benefits, um, you get to build your website and start selling with zero cost <clears throat> with that free plan. The uh, artificial, intelligence, artificial intelligence technology that it uses makes it a lot easier and faster for you to build your store. So, you save valuable time when loading your product since it points out what categories they, fix, they fit to through keywords and just even analyzing the images that you use, which is a really cool feature and saves you a lot, uh, a lot of time categorizing your products. It's also the best value for your money type of e-commerce option for small size businesses. Um, another uh, plus to it is the fact that it caters also to service-based businesses so they can utilize booking capabilities as well as restaurants, which can utilize online food ordering. So you're allowed to build your whole menu virtually um, and then people can order that way. And that's great for the uh, curbside and local delivery feature as well. The main drawbacks um, are the fact that you're not 100% free to customize your site. So their templates aren't as um, advanced or they have set places where things need to be, whereas Squarespace and Wix are a bit more customizable, drag and drop, do exactly what you want. You have to fit the template pretty well in these ones. Um, <clears throat> and um, the selling features are pretty, they're pretty basic if you're planning to grow your business. So it's, it's a great starting off platform if you want to keep things simple, but in order for your scalability, it's a little bit more limited. All right, and then um, moving on to our last platform, which is Shopify. 
Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of Shopify. It's one of the most well-known e-commerce platforms. So it has a great range of services for all businesses and sizes. The three main plans include Shopify Lite, Shopify Basic, and then Shopify. They also have um, two more plans aimed at larger businesses. So those include Advanced Shopify, which is $300 a month American USD dollars, and Shopify Plus, which is $2,000 a month. So I'm not gonna touch on those. Um, I, this webinar is more aimed at the smaller sized businesses and um, I don't think <clears throat> anyone has capabilities that they would like to enable for $2,000 a month. So we're gonna stick with the small plans. And the first one is going to be Shopify Lite plan. So that is $9 a month. And it's basically great for those who have an existing website that they want to add commerce functionality to just through a buy button. So if you have a, a existing um, website on WordPress or something like that, and you have a product you wanna upload, you can upload a product and make it viable. And then the payment process goes through uh, Shopify. It also allows you to sell strictly on Instagram. So if you have a Instagram business, a lot of vintage stores do that. Um, so they don't need to have a e-commerce website. They just sell strictly from their uh, Instagram. It's a great affordable option. So the next plan is the Shopify basic plan. It's gonna be $29, ooh, sorry, <clears throat> $29 a month and has a 2.7% fee and 30 cents per transaction. So it's one of the lower ones compared to the other platform. This plan includes unlimited uh, products and storage multi-channel selling on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Amazon, eBay. Uh, this also includes the abandoned cart recovery and has blog fun functionality. Uh, Shopify really pushes their users to use blogs um, because it can generate more sales as you can offer more details on the product and why it's valuable. Uh, lastly, the Shopify plan is the most advanced and it has a slightly lower transaction fee of that 2.6%. It also allows for more professional and reports and analysis. So if your business is a bit more data-driven, um, you'll get all those results in detail. Um, it also has the ability to create e-gift cards directly through, Shop uh, sorry, through Shopify, so you don't have to purchase an additional plugin. If you were to use the lower plans, you can buy a e-gift card plugin, um, but those are usually an additional monthly fee. So we're gonna go a little bit more in detail on Shopify and who it's best for. So <clears throat> Shopify Lite is best for anyone using, like I said, a uh, separate website such as WordPress that requires just simple e-commerce functionality or a merchant who wants to sell directly on Instagram and then you would connect with their customers on the Messenger app of Instagram. Uh, so any inquiries would be through that, uh, strictly through Instagram. Shopify Basic will be best for merchants who have a limited budget but need a standalone online store uh, that functions well and has a beautiful theme. Uh, merchants that don't need advanced selling or reporting functionality and stores that want to use their blogs to attract customers and prospects. Uh, it also is good for merchants who require more in-depth reporting on um, abandoned cart recovery, things like that. Uh, lastly, the Shopify plan is going to be best for companies that want to scale up quick with unlimited products and unlimited store, uh, storage. Stores that bring in, they recommend that it's stores that bring in more than $5,000 a month um, in online sales. So higher sales will help um, level out with the, sorry, higher sales levels lower at a lower transaction fee help offset the cost of the plan. And then it's also best for merchants who sell products in an industry with high demand for gift cards. So if you're gonna be selling a lot of gift cards, so these are industries such as beauty, lifestyle, or fashion. And we're gonna keep the Shopify breakdown a little bit more brief since we covered a bit more detail on this platform. So it does have one of the most robust app marketplaces with over 4,000 apps and plugins to optimize and scale your operations. The whole process of building your e-commerce website with Shopify could basically be summed up into three steps. 
um, you select your store theme, you add your content, and then you can import your products um, either manually, which will take a little longer, or you can do CSV files. So that's using like a entering them from um, a spreadsheet, having everything detailed, import them that way, and they'll all uh, they'll all upload. So some of the key benefits are the multi-channel selling. Um, uh, which includes Amazon and eBay. And a lot of uh, local retailers are taking advantage of selling on Amazon as well. That process does get a little bit complicated, but um, Shopify, the connection with Amazon makes it a lot easier. Um, you're also able to sync your inventories if you're already selling on another platform. So if you decide to, uh, if you're on an e-commerce platform already, you can sync your um, existing inventory over to Shopify. Uh, you also get a robust inventory system. So you get alerted when one of your products is out of stock, which is a great feature. And a lot of other platforms don't allow you to do that without purchasing a plugin. Um, you also get built in sh drop shipping tools. So this is a great option for um, businesses that are on a budget and don't have storage for your products yet. So if you're a small business, but you're selling a lot of products, um, drop shipping helps with that. So it's basically a retail fulfillment method where a store doesn't keep the products itself in stock. Instead, when a store sells a product using the drop shipping model, it purchases the item from a third party and has ha and they ship it out directly to the consumer, the customer, sorry. So as a result, the seller doesn't have to handle the product directly. Um, this is something that can get a little more complicated and involves warehousing and stuff like that. But um, it is a feature that if you have a, a lot of inventory and um, strictly online without an in-store uh, or storefront, uh, it's a great option. So the main drawbacks are going to be the fact that it's not the most budget-friendly um, e-commerce platform for the small retailers. So with the prices being in USD, the upper tier plans, when you convert them, start to get a bit pricier in Canadian. Um, and with the, you will be charged that transaction fee unless you use its in-house in payment gateway. So if you decide to use Shopify payments, um, you will not be uh, charged that transaction fee. Uh, Shopify holds the money for, I believe it's three days before it gets deposited into your account. And um, there may be limitations onto what payment methods they um, accept. Okay, so that wraps up the platform breakdown. Um, I just have a few, uh, oh, sorry. I uh, skipped over why you should choose Shopify. <laughs> so just briefly, um, you would choose Shopify if you're committed to building a successful, strictly e-commerce business. Um, you also can have it integrate with your in-store operations as well as they have POS, uh, um, in-store POS options available too. Um, and it's also great if you wanna create a solid foundation for your store. So it provides you with the powerful tools to build and manage your store. And the big app store allows you to uh, really grow and scale as a business. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the tips and tricks. So I have three kind of small ones to start with when you are launching a e-commerce. So they include committing to a schedule for consistency, building out your channels from day one and put thought into your copy. So I just see a question. Yeah, so the Digital Main Street program, that's the Shop Here program. Um, that is something that I can give you the email for and they would know more information. I believe that they can set up the light plan for you on your existing website. Um, or if you choose to go with the basic plan, they'll fully build a whole Shopify website for you. Um, okay, so the first tip is committing to a schedule. So. When you start a new store, you'll want to follow a consistent schedule that your customers know when to check back for for new products. So if you add a new product each week, I would suggest doing it on the same day of the week um, in the beginning, just so people know when to check back um, and can see the new products. 
Um, if you commit to a blog, adding posts on the same days will encourage people to keep checking back as well. As soon as you become inconsistent is when you start to lose a bit of that customer loyalty in the beginning. Um, I can send the Digital Main Street a email in the chat. I think some of my colleagues might be on this call right now. Brittany or Andrea, if you could find the shop here email and send it in the chat, I would really appreciate that. If they don't, I will um, include it on the um, materials I send after this presentation. Um, all right. So building out your channels from day one. So as soon as you've bought your store domain name, start building out an audience. You might start with posts on social media to grow a fan base so that when you launch, they have an, you have an audience that's ready to buy. Once your store is launched, you'll want to start collecting email addresses and building referral traffic. By doing this from day one, you'll grow your uh, customer base faster. So focusing on building your, out your social media, email lists, and referral traffic, you'll likely need to spend less time on ads over the long term. Um, you'll be able to promote your content to your audience through your own channels. Perfect. So Brittany shared the shop here team. So if you are interested in building a Shopify, Shopify site for free, uh, for you get 90 days free, um, they will uh, direct you from there. And then finally, uh, another tip is just putting thought into your copy on your products. So many businesses make the mistake of not adding copy when importing products to their store. Uh, the bullet points listed are there to give you product details, yet they don't help convert sales on their own. So I suggest writing a description about the product and selecting the most valuable bullet points that will better help you achieve more sales. People often read the copy when they're on the fence about um, a product. So having well-written copy uh, could be the deciding factor whether someone purchases a product on your site. So for example, if you sell dresses on your store, you might wanna mention how great uh, they'll look at their next event or what shoes they would pair well with, that kind of thing. All right, I just wanna check on the time. Okay, so we're gonna finish up with some key trends. So um, these are trends just to kind of keep an eye on and um, that if you implement them, they'll comp complement your e-commerce operations and hopefully um, make your e-commerce op operations as successful as they can be. So these include um, device usage, which talks about the mobile first kind of initiative that's going on right now. Uh, videos on the rise, personalization, customer service, curbside pickup, local delivery, and smart shoppers. All right, so to begin, device usage and the importance of mobile compatibility. So when it comes to discussing the future of e-commerce, uh, one thing is clear, there will be much more importance placed on the devices that buyers use when they're shopping online. So in the past, most e-commerce businesses built their shopping experience to be desktop first. Now it's the opposite. E-commerce businesses are hell-bent on designing and building their own businesses with mobile users in mind before desktop users. So it might sound like a strange switch, but it actually makes a lot of sense, um, especially when you consider the fact that 45% of all consumer decisions were made on mobile last year. Um, it's even more interesting when you consider that 56% of buyers have already used their mobile devices to research products while they're at home. So it goes against the past assumption that um, people made, um, people wanted mobile, uh, sorry. <laughs> it goes against the past assumption that a lot of people made, which fixated on mobile websites being primed to be easily digestible for shoppers who are on the go. So it's not the case. People are still using mobile devices at home. So buyers want the full, full shopping experience on every device that they have. Moving on to video content. So the use of video content is really on the rise. Uh, E-commerce businesses are going to need to hone their uh, videography skills because video is projected to play a massive role in the future of e-commerce. 
Um, research has already found that 60% of shoppers would rather watch a product video than read a product description when they're shopping. So these changes in shopping behaviors are probably most likely due to the um, evolution of social media apps and their prioritizing of video content, thinking Instagram stories, Snapchat, stuff like that. So adding video elements to your product listings and incorporating video into your marketing strategy is a must um, if you want to succeed with e-commerce in 2021. Um, a uh, research by HubSpot actually found that consumers preferred lower quality authentic videos over high quality video that seems to be inauthentic and contrived. So this is great news for all of you. So it means you don't need a huge budget or a video production studio to start making videos and do video marketing. Um, especially when you consider that you can shoot high quality HD 4K videos with our smartphones. So an example of a plugin that you can use, I know this is available on Shopify. I'm sure it's available on other platforms as well. I would assume it would be with Wix too, um, is Vimo Create Video Maker. So basically it will help you create, turn your product pictures into videos that can be used on ads or on your um, product description pages. So it's something to research and look into if you are um, interested in integrating video into your uh, e-commerce plan. Okay, so moving on to personalization. So that is creating a personalized experience for the customer. So across the internet, people seem to be uh, fatiguing knowing that algorithms are messaging them rather than real people. So we're really craving personalization in our shopping experience online. Um, buyers wanna feel like there's somebody behind the computer screen who actually cares about them. And um, it doesn't need to be anything too complex. It really can just be something as simple as a personalized email or a curated discount code. Um, so an integral part of the future of e-commerce will revolve around businesses and entrepreneurs finding ways to build those direct relationships with their customers. Um, adding personalization into your marketing campaigns is an easy way to start building those uh, relationships. So here are just a few ideas. You can um, address your audience by their name whenever you're sending out an email. Send them sneak peeks to your latest product launches simply because you value them as a customer. Um, bonus points if you can send them content that's related to their previous purchase. So if you have a log of uh, purchases, you can see who they're associated with and send them personalized product recommendations post-purchase. Um, you can also ask your customers for feedback on the products that they purchase. So this will um, help you utilize social proof as a marketing tactic. So you can use testimonials and things like that in your marketing strategies of your site. And now moving on to customer service and reflecting that customer service from in-store online. So both in-house and online customer experience is important. Hiring an amazing sales assistant, sorry, yeah, sales assistant in-house uh, who can guide your customers through the sales process or alleviate any stress customers may feel is important. The same goes for on online. So optimizing your sales process online to take into account what a customer would expect is super important for your store. So this means potentially testing out your sales process, your checkout flow with actual people and then identifying the pain points that customers may have. So you can test your website to include your call to uh, action. So a call to action is how you try to persuade someone to complete a transaction whether that be giving up their email or actually making a purchase on your store. So for example, some of the most popular um, CTAs include purchase now, uh, learn more, pick a color, visit now, or even subscribe. You can also check and test the length of your checkout process, the information asked for during the checkout page, uh, your messaging and your product page flow. So virtual merchandising of products and making sure things look nice beside each other online is just as important as how they look nice on the, in an in-store experience. All right. 
And I think we just have a few, I got about 10 minutes left. So smart shoppers and uh, pre-purchase product research. So when uh, we, when considering where to buy a product and particularly more expensive products, customers tend to do research online, even if they end up buying a product in store, shoppers are more inclined to do research beforehand. So a study found that 81% of shoppers conduct online research before buying, which is a huge figure that shows the importance of making sure that you're being found on social media, on Google search and anywhere else your customers may be. Uh, it's important to be in all these places because if your customers are researching a product and you give them all the right information at the right time, they may choose to buy from you instead of a competitor or going the in-store route. So understanding your target audience and how they buy products can help you build trust with them and grow your customer base. Uh, and this is something uh, that my colleague Brittany will be discussing a bit more next week in her webinar. Same time on Wednesday about um, paid ads and the strategy for that. So um, that will really help with uh, reaching those smart shoppers. You can learn that more detail next week. Um, and then lastly, we have the trend in um, local delivery and curbside pickup due to the pandemic. So in a study conducted by Shopify, um, more consumers in Canada and New Zealand are choosing to pick up, uh, choosing alternative pickup and delivery methods for the first time than in other countries. Also 28% of shoppers in Canada are choosing curbside or local delivery more often than before the pandemic. So integrating and allowing these fulfillment options to be available on your um, website are very important. Uh, that goes back to Square having that available for in the free plan, which in a lot of the other plans enabling local delivery curbside is a, um, a plug-in or an additional cost. So with all that being said, um, that kind of wraps up everything that I had to talk about. I see Brittany shared her um, link to sign up for her um, webinar on uh, paid ad strategy. So I, uh, I hope everything that you learned today was useful. I just realized that I didn't complete my phone number on this slide. Anyway, shoot me an email if you uh, have any additional questions. I also have a lot of experience with building um, a Shopify site as well as a Wix site. So if any of you are looking to build on those platforms or just need assistance on any platform, I'm here to help. Um, at no additional cost, all, my, all our services through the Digital Service Squad are free. So take advantage of that.